My name is Oluwaku Asuna. And today I'll be talking to us on the subject of gamification. What is gamification? How can we help our businesses adopt gamification as a strategy, building stickiness into our products? And what are the tools and frameworks out there available to guide our adoption journey? Come along as we deep dive into this subject. So you might be wondering, what are some examples of um, gamification out there in the world? Perhaps the most common one, especially given the lockdown and um, our our collective increase interest in um, staying fit. We might have seen this, the Apple rings on our Apple watches. That is an example of gamification. Have you ever tried to close those rings? You've participated or you've been engaged in the gamified experience. Um, while your goals just set and presented to you, um, you might not be as motivated to complete those constituting activities that would help you close the ring. But given the fact that you have presented a ring that you need or a set of rings that you need to perform different activities to close and you get an immediate feedback every time you partook in the activity or activities that will help close at least one ring and you see the ring move you get motivated to want to continue to close the ring you want to you get motivated to want to continue to participate or partake in those activities to ensure that at the end of the day you have closed um, your fitness loop <laughs> What are game mechanics? Game mechanics are those tools that are used to sustain interest um, in games. And there are three of them that are most popular, quite popular. And the three are points, badges, and leaderboards. So points are awarded upon completion of a specified point earning task. So you set up your gamified experience such that customers need to complete or players need to complete several actions in the course of their gamified experience and for every challenge or micro challenge that a customer or player complete you reward the point badges badges are allocated at the end of a collection of challenges or micro challenges to signify that the player had come thus far in a gamified experience or in a gamified journey. Badges are usually shareable. I'm sure you've seen some um, badges um, on LinkedIn earned, um, outside of LinkedIn, of course, on um, learning management platforms or online schools or massive open online courses. Majority of the time, these platforms have adopted gamification to ensure that uh, students complete several units um, towards completing the entire online course. Um, what uh, we've seen in the past is that the completion rate for online courses uh, was about five um, percent so only five out of a hundred people to take online courses complete them and um, these platforms um, have adopted several tools to help drive engagement with the students and drive completion one of which is gamification a third game mechanic that is used widely in gamification is the idea of leaderboards um, leaderboards um, simply shows people of similar skill sets who are playing the same game um, shows their performance compared to one another. So a little bit may be showing the top 10 players or might be showing all players in the gamified experience and shows where an individual is relative to the rest of the players. So a player will then see that, okay, I'm in the middle of the pack. Um, there are 50 people underneath me or behind me that I'm ahead of. And um, there are about 20 people that are ahead of, that are ahead of me. And that uh, could lead to um, gameful strategies to say, okay, um, how do I... Um, move from being number 21 on the leaderboard to being number 20. Um, and then we go back to the rule book to see what are the set of activities that I need to complete or actions that we need to take in order to score more points. And um, we check to see how many of such points we need to score in order to move from our current ranking to the next possible ranking. So points, badges, and leaderboards are some of the uh, most widely used game mechanics out there in the world. <laughs> You know, there are advocates who argue that when purpose is not known, abuse becomes imminent. So, uh, perhaps we should discuss quickly um, the purpose of gamification. One key reason why we gamify is because the, the idea that humans only make rational decisions when confronted with all facts does not hold true. So, it's never the case that people go all out to consider all the facts before taking the decision. Well, in certain areas of our lives, we do that. But the vast majority of decisions we take has got some element of um, irrationality embedded in it. Not the willingness or the deliberate willingness to want to be stupid or the deliberate willingness to do the wrong thing, but 
uh, on the balance of fat, you would realize that uh, there was a lot more emotions um, involved in the decision. So why came a fine? To nudge people to sometimes take actions that are good for them. I always argue that in a gamified environment, there are usually two major actors, the gamifier or the owner of a game or the platform, which usually is a business who expects or wants or needs people, individuals, to take certain actions. They want, they, they want certain behaviors amplified within their target audience. It could be that they want you to keep logging into an app on a daily basis. It could be that, like the Apple example, or other fitness uh, app examples, they want you to complete a set of objectives on a daily basis. And they know that just asking you to take those steps, presenting you with all of the peer-reviewed articles on that subject in the world might not be sufficient. Then they create a channel, a stickiness tool, via which they engage with you emotionally. So back to the Apple example, the rings, the rings engage with an emotional core, with our interest to not be seen as losers, our interest to complete that thing which we started. <laughs> so what are the tools are available out there to assist in properly adopting gamification? Look, there, there are quite a number of tools. Perhaps the best, most popular tool out there is Optalysis, the Optalysis framework. Uh, the Optalysis framework is a human-centered gamification design framework that lays out the eight core drives for human motivation. The framework was developed by a gentleman named Yukai Chao. Mr. Yukai Chao argued that every individual wants meaning. They want meaningfulness out of their engagement. As such, when we are creating a gamified experience or environment, we need to ensure that there is, there is a meaningfulness attached to the game we're asking people to do. People need to be able to connect their experience in that game to something bigger than them, something almost aspirational, if not totally aspirational. He argues that a human beings pander towards being empowered. So your gamified environment or your gamified project must be one that provides a measure of empowerment, a measure of uplifting, a measure of moving individuals from a point to, to a different point. Um, uh, something that creates a sense of making progress. Uh, your, so your, your, your gamified experiences must have some elements of social influence or must help players create some element of social influence. Um, that really comes to play when your gamified experiences includes um, a leaderboard. Um, leaderboards would show your player relative to other players in the game and shows their performance. And that does two things. One, for players who are ahead of a pack, it gives them an opportunity to brag. We all like to brag. Yeah, even the most modest of us likes to. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, I scored that point and all of that. And um, for those who are slightly behind, it gives them a sense that the next point is scorable. Progress at the game or in the experience or in the engagement is possible. Avoidance. It's important that we build avoidance into our gamified experiences. Avoidance simply means that you're building a risk factor in the gamified experience. Um, an example would be that um, in your gamified experience, points that have been collected towards a broader goal becomes elusive if the customer or the player does not continue to play. So an example would be if you haven't logged in, if you've scored 20 points out of 30 or 40 points, total scoreable in the level of a game um, that you're playing, and you haven't logged in in three days, you lose those points. What then that does is that it helps build stickiness. The customer or the player would continue to show up in the game in order not to lose accumulated points. I'm sure. um, on predictability, it's important that um, your games have some elements of surprise. And, I mean, we've all seen movies that we could tell the end from at the beginning and usually we slip off in the course of those movies or we lose interest quickly and we want to other things before the movie ends or before the movie gets um, to its climax. You don't want that to happen to your gamified experience or to your gamified project. So it's super important that you build some elements of unpredictability into the game. Ownership. Your players shouldn't feel forced to play. So when building a gamified experience, it's super, super, I can't overemphasize this. It's super important that A, all players play willingly. Of course, um, you can market the idea of the game to them. You can tell them what you want them to do. You can tell them what they stand to benefit if they state the course. But it's super important that you don't tie their next proportion to their participation in the game 
um, you don't you don't tie uh, the completion or the fulfillment of their order to their completion of certain tasks um, that do not tie directly to the actual purchase journey. So it's super important that when building our gamified experiences for our customers, um, that we ensure that there's the, the customer can have a sense of ownership. They can feel that I'm doing this of my own volition. I own my experience. I I, I own what's going on here. And when gamers own their own experiences when 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 they can navigate the system without restriction and when they don't feel compelled to navigate the system they usually stay the course and navigate for longer another element that we need to build into our gamification ex- uh, experiences um, is a sense of ac- accomplishment um, and this usually uh, is done using um, points and badges um, where for the completion successful completion of a challenge or micro challenge successfully is rewarded rewarded in a way that can be showcased rewarded in a way that makes sense to the players rewarded in a way that is somewhat useful to the player now it's super important that I mention as well that when you can find an experience, um, there should be mutual benefit between the players and the platform or the platform owners. And I'll explain. So when gamification is um, strictly to benefit those who have created the gaming platform, then there's a tendency that you are exploiting your users or your players. And that does not go down well. Um, with anybody it's just a matter of time for that gamified experience to lose its attraction but where you're nudging individuals and groups of people to take actions that are beneficial to them but that they might not take normally on their own or by themselves then you might be applying um, gamification for good so gamification should be adopted in scenarios where people will normally be reluctant to do things that are good for themselves it's super important that we look for that sweet spot between business objectives and overall customer benefit. And in that overarching, overlapping area, we build our gamified experience. <laughs>